the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. We are the nation's leader in outsourced dental billing. Our clients require highly skilled dental office managers that can consult with client offices. So welcome to the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. This is Andre Quintana, your host for the podcast that is really gaining some popularity. I think that eAssist is now being recognized uh, nationally. And I have to say something about eAssist before we bring our exciting guest. And that is, my friends, that eAssist has also been recognized for one of the fastest growing companies in the nation. So um, with that, I just want to go ahead and bring our guest, Stephanie Fario, and she is an account executive, and she has many other skills and talents where she helps e-assist clients, dentists, dental offices, dental teams go to that next level. Stephanie, welcome to the show tonight. How are you today? I'm I'm well. How are you? I am doing great, and you can't go by me because I always like to say that I'm always doing great because that is what makes other people around us perform really, really great. And that is, you know, I always have a thing where I tell my team, be great and help other people be great as well. I think it's the essence of, of eAssist. If, if anybody who's ever had contact with the company notices, we it has to be the most positive group of people. It, it's easy to be great and have a great day around here because you just work with the greatest group of people. So, and I think that comes through and I completely agree with you. You should just be great and have a great day and, and put that positivity into everything. That's excellent. Now, speaking of great, tell everybody listening to our show how great you really are. So tell us a little bit about your greatness, a little bit about yourself. How's that? Oh, goodness. I was a, a great dental office manager, and now I feel like I am a great entrepreneur, thanks to ESOS, and I am a great asset to my offices. And being with this company, I'm a great mom now. I, I'm excited to say that I feel like this has helped me on a personal level get to a whole nother level of being a great person and, and just bringing that across to my family as well as work. So I'm very thankful that I get to live that every day, and and that's probably my biggest accomplishment is becoming a, a, a great mom. That's excellent. And you know, uh, we're talking right now with uh, Stephanie about dental claims and e-assist. You know, we cure the pain out there for dental billing issues. We have lots of products, and, and if you go to our website, which is eassist.com or dentalbilling.com, you will find all of the services uh, that we offer at ESS. So, Stephanie, tell me a little bit more about you and how you found ESS. I found ESS four years before I actually joined ESS, and I never actually finished my interview and vetting process because I was in the middle of a cross country move and I just kind of lost my way with it. And then four years later, I found eAssist again and actually made it through my entire vetting process and, and my interviews. And I was on maternity leave at the time. And the idea, I think every, every mom can relate to this. The idea of going back to work after having my son was just becoming more and more depressing. And I wanted something where I could travel and enjoy my time with my family on my own schedule, but still do what I love. So, I found eAssist and it almost seemed too good to be true. And it's definitely not easy to get hired on with eAssist. There's a lot of a lot of vetting that you go through to make sure we are the great team that we are, but I am blessed every day that I found this company and I'm amazed that I found it and it's just it's was it was so awesome to find that opportunity out there. That's great and we're going to dive into a lot of those things that you do and your specialty with eAssist, but I understand you said you you were a dental assistant, right, in your days with dental offices. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I was. So as a dental assistant, you know, uh, were you one of those assistants that would also be a team player where you would you would help the office probably 
anywhere the office needed front desk, uh, maybe assisting hygiene a little bit. Were you one of those assistants that really did it all for an office? I was. I was an assistant that became an office manager, as you as you do, going up through the ranks. And so I, you know, in order to do that, you do have to be willing to be flexible and help anywhere that you can. So as a dental assistant, I did. I called on claims. I called patients to set up appointments. I did follow-ups. I picked up the phone. Um, you're kind of a jack of all trades in a dental office, no matter what your position is. Well, there's a reason why I, why I asked you that question. And I took a gamble because that was unscripted, where you could have come back and said, no, I just, you know, I just was a really great dental assistant. I didn't do anything else except that. And you have people out there with that mindset. And that could be okay. But the reason I asked that question is because I have encountered about, oh, maybe 15 interviews right now with eAssist uh, dental Solutions team members. And I have to say that one of the common uh, things uh, amongst all the, the people with the assist helping dental offices is that all of you are well-rounded people. I have had uh, dental consultants that really dove in. I've had front desk superstars. I had a dental hygienist on the show, uh, Kim, if you go back to episode uh, four or five. And so you guys really bring this knowledge as a team all over the country to help e-assist and help these office teams. What are your thoughts about how Dr. Anderson has built this company? I think they purposely look for diverse individuals. I think he recognizes that it's it's an asset to know not only, you know, it's great to know the billing side of it and it's great to know the coding, but if you don't know what goes behind that, if you don't know the procedures and you don't know the patients, and then you can be a great biller, but you may not be an effective biller. So it, it's definitely an asset to have people that can relate to the office, relate to no matter who they're talking to in the office. I can relate to the office manager. I can relate to an assistant. I can relate to the doctor because I've sat through those procedures and I've assisted in doing them. So when there's questions, I think I think Dr. Anderson and, and everybody on our, our C-level realizes that you need to be diverse to be really great in this industry. And I really like the way they do it because I think I spoke about this in one of the previous episodes that when you have an idea, you know, and you and you uh, put it out there for Sandy, uh, JC, and everyone involved, and Dr. Anderson, you know, they're gonna really give it a ride. They're gonna more likely than not, if it's something that will help the company, they're gonna be open to listening, and that is one of the key things in success of corporations, uh, big or small, is the art of listening to your clients and your team. It goes a long way. And one of the things I have experienced, because I'm also a client, is that when I talk to uh, our account representatives at eAssist, because sometimes I have to, they listen very well. They listen to my needs. And when I've spoken with other people, even uh, team members, when I went to the conference, they're all a bunch of great listeners. And then, oh, by the way, they also like to execute and do great things. So I understand that you have a background in medical coding and you're part of the medical coding team and insurance verification team. Can you unpack that just a little bit and let everybody out there know what that means? Sure. Um, we can start with insurance verification. It's a little more condensed. So our insurance ver verification team is a little bit newer, but it's definitely a service that I feel like if I could bundle and get every office to do would be so valuable to them. And I, I want more offices to to seek Monique out and to ask her about it. There's so many offices out there that either don't have the time or don't have don't understand the importance of verifying a patient's benefits before they come in. As an account executive, I can't tell you how many times I get a claim back where the patient wasn't eligible at time of service and then we're trying to track them down and the office is holding that that debt while you're trying to figure out if the patient did have benefits or get them to pay their bill. There's times where services aren't covered and we could have known that in the beginning with a decent insurance verification. So for the minimal cost that it is, and eAssist really does make the cost minimal, it's a huge value to the office to know in advance 
We do a breakdown. We know the patient's maximum, their deductible, what they've met. We get any history. We will go down to the procedure code. The offices can guide that to a certain extent and customize the the insurance verification. So if you're heavy on perio treatment or you're, say, a periodontist, we can do a verification that will tell you what perio codes are covered and what are not, what the guidelines are, so that you're not surprised later when the insurance comes back and either doesn't pay for it as a non-covered service or wants documentation that you don't have because you didn't know that that was the guideline. And there's so many different insurance companies now all with their own guidelines that there's really no way for you to keep up if you don't verify patient by patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And then the verification is is so important because, you know, I have a question for you. We're here having this show for listeners that come from, you know, they can come, they can be working in a dental lab as well uh, as people who want to learn more about uh, how to create a better insurance, uh, you know, how to submit uh, more efficiently. But a dental professional out there that opens up a practice and thinks, okay, well, I'm going to do a crown today. And uh, I'm going to send the claim out, and all of a sudden, the crown is not paid. What is your first step to troubleshoot a claim like that in your world? I think it's important that the first, your first indicator on those claims is going to be the EOB. And if, as long as it's something that we can appeal, meaning it's not a non-covered service, or the patient was properly eligible at the time of service, a lot of times those denials are a lack of proper documentation, um, a lack of either the cl- the clinical consultant didn't have enough documentation to review or they didn't have any at all. A lot of the e-assist offices I've come on board with um, don't send attachments. They, they either don't have time or they don't realize the procedure needs an attachment or it just gets sent out in a batch and they don't realize it. And the insurance company is going to review it whether you provide the documents or not. You might be lucky enough that they request them and you catch it, but sometimes they won't. So it's important that we provide all the documentation we can. So if I were to get a denial, we would want to provide and make sure we provided x-rays, intraoral pictures, a narrative, any prior placement details. And the strongest thing for crowns are those intraoral pictures. I think doctors underestimate how much can be seen on an intraoral image that can't be seen on an x-ray. Right, right. Now, and you, you kind of went into the next topic that I wanted to go. So are you the one that makes a lot of contact with your offices in, in terms of talking to your office managers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Tell everybody out there, our, our ESS Nation listening, uh, what are some of the pains that you hear? You know, you don't have to be specific about the uh, the name of the office, but what are some of the things that you hear about dental offices, dental teams frustrated, fed up of dealing with the PPO insurance? Wait times are number one. That I think that's the number one thing that brings people to our door is is just the general amount of time it can take the office staff, when you're having to interface with patients at the same time, calling insurance companies and filing, following up on claims. So you can easily sit on the phone for an hour and still not get through to a rep. And if you're having to put the call on hold or hang up, heaven forbid, while you're interfacing with patients, that can, that can create delays and cause frustrations. And then just being overworked. I mean, we all know dental offices are busy places and they're not generally staffed completely. There's always a time where you are down team members or down staff members or you need more staff than you have and there's not enough hours in the day. So I think those are the main two frustrations that come through with offices that I'm on board. Stephanie, I'll tell you, we can take all these episodes that we do and kind of package them up together and and put it into a, a great, great book because uh, every time I talk to uh, any of the team members, I, I call them, you know, my family now, of course, because you're a family now. Um, the truth is, is that we we kind of reach that common theme of what these officers are doing, what they're going through in wait times. For example, I think one of the biggest mm-hmm. problems out there is that without even asking you, is that when you 
open up an office, when you take on a, a new client or your existing clients is, how long is it going to take to turn this ship around? Do you ever get that question? Or, you know, how far the claims are behind and how fast can e-assist turn it around? Can you educate us a little bit about that? I can, and we do. We get that question all the time. That's that's the main question. That's why they bring us on is is to get it under control, and they want to know when they can expect those results. Does doctor, doctors are results driven people? So eAssist does a very good job, and the team leads do a very good job of setting realistic expectations for our clients. We try to get the ninety days touched on completely within the first thirty days of being on the account. So, and, and we try to have a lead time of, I believe it is 90 days to have the, the 90 days cut in half, the, the over 90 insurance. And if I can interrupt so, for a second, while you have your team tackling those 90 days, you are also performing posting of on the accounts for the doctor. So it's not like just e-assist and Stephanie's just going to handle the old claims and then everything's going to be put on hold. They're handling A to Z for the doctors. Is that correct? That's correct. We do everything that a billing department would do. Okay. Go back to the 90 days because that uh, that was exciting right there, but I had to interrupt there. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So that, I mean, that's, that's generally, you know, and it, and it can vary from office to office because obviously if you onboard an office that has half a million dollars in over 90 days claims, that's not going to be cut in half in, in three months. So realistic expectations are usually set. But for the most part, our, our AMs, who are the, the people that are primarily assigned to the aging, are very serious and they're very driven and they're very motivated and they've got years and years of experience in getting these claims paid and getting them paid quickly. Yeah, but and we I, have a huge wealth of knowledge. I do know a little office in Raleigh, uh, in the Raleigh area, that was at about ninety or hundred thousand dollars in ninety days, and he assists turned them around pretty quickly. So, but because uh, you do work your magic, go on. But I just wanted to kind of mention that. What we do, and we have, um, even though you only have one AM and you have one AE, you know, if you have a larger office, you might have more than that. They do try to put together a realistic team. You have the entire company at your disposal. I mean, you you know because you're part of the company. You see our our all staff emails go out with our our cries for help for the 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 people that are better experienced in ortho or the people that are better experienced in perio when we have that claim that just won't pay. So you're not just getting two people to work your office. You're getting I don't even know how many there are of us right oh. now. Four or five hundred of us yeah. to <laughs> to our, our it's intense. Our expansive knowledge to to work your claims um, and get them get them down and get them taken care of, and we really do all pitch in when somebody is in need of some information. It is intense. I could be funny and say, "Oh my gosh, I'm I, I get worn out by all the emails," but at the same time, my goodness, the work that you're doing, the hard work that is expressed in all of those all staff emails, you can really see if a uh, team member joins ESS for the first time on day one, they will be like, this is where I want to work forever. Because there's so much passion in, in all of those messages. There's so much interest in helping offices. I bet Dr. Anderson has to be smiling every single day when he goes to bed. Because I'll tell you, it's just, it, it's beautiful, beautiful to see. And you see it, of course, right? Yeah, absolutely. I my first day I got an all staff email and within 10 minutes this person had 10 answers and 10 pieces of advice on how to handle this appeal and they were all wonderful pieces of advice, some things that I knew and some things that I didn't. And it's just the wealth of knowledge that you get in addition to Belle of course who is a world oh. of knowledge all on her own. Well, Belle was on the podcast. So if go back to episode five. I think that was uh, Bell. Uh, amazing, amazing knowledge and uh, so much experience. So we 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 really went deep in there on on the dental claims. How are you feeling so far? Are you enjoying our interview? Yes. Yeah, I love it. It's this, great. This is great. This is great. So when somebody is going to join uh, your team or or e assist a client or 
uh, a team member. What are some basic uh, requirements? Let's let's focus on the office uh, to be able to uh, to start with eAssist. Can you educate us a little bit about that? As far as we have a great IT department, correct? But what are some basic we requirements? Do. Uh, computers. I, th- I think that's the only thing that Angel requires you have. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Because eAssist e- 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 will go ahead and, and set up a scanner, right? Yeah. All kinds we, of yeah, equipment. Yeah, we do. Yep. And, uh, and then you have all these follow-up uh, reports that you, that you build in for your offices so that they're not in the dark about what's going on with all the dental claims. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, we do. We send out. So we have a, we have a great, great reporting software that that Dr. Anderson and everybody have designed. That I, I mean, I can't imagine how how I ran an office for years without these reports. Now looking at them, but so you you get a daily report which tells you our daily activity, which is great because you always know what we're doing every day. Even though we're in constant communication with our offices, I talk with my offices several times a day at least by email, sometimes by phone, depending on what works for them. But you also get this daily email that tells you how many claims we've worked, where your production's at, where your collections are at. It graphs it for you. It tells you what your AR is, not only insurance, but patient. Even though we don't always work your patient AR if you don't have that service, we tell you where it's at. So you can see if it's going up, you know that you either need to get a team member in office assigned on that, or you need to get in touch with your e-assist um, RM to look at patient portion management. Mm-hmm. So we do those. There's a weekly report that goes out. Then there's a monthly report that goes out. In addition to the reports that you get with your invoices, we love reports. We have a lot of reports and they all tell you different things. And honestly, none of no two report is the same. They all give you new information that is key for running your practice. I'll tell you, there are two things that I'm really happy about with eAssist. They have made me feel like, for example, that I have gained four employees really for the price of one. That's number one, because uh, they've given my team, and I know you can speak for other offices, the time back. The other thing I'm really happy about what goes on is that I was part of management, for example. I would never take time off because, or, or one of my main team members because the fear of not having those main people in there either trying to collect as much as possible, right, on a day-to-day because every day counted. Now with eAssist, everybody can breathe a little bit. Uh, office managers and, and team members can take time off. You know, they can have a life just like you guys have flexibility working from home with your families. You're actually doing something really amazing because you're creating that for other office uh, office teams. How do you feel about that and being part of that body of, of a unit that's creating that? I can relate. I was an office manager and I never took time off and it, it was exhausting. So, and when I would take time off, I'd spend my time off glued to my phone because my staff was texting me or calling me about things that were going on at the office that I had to handle, even though I was on vacation. So I can relate to what you just said about Mm -hmm. not having the time off or, or having that anxiety when you even would take it. And I think that it's amazing to be able to give somebody that peace of mind. I mean, the offices that I work with now are just so, I mean... Their their personalities are so great anyways. The office managers I work with, I've been so lucky. They're just amazing people. But you can tell the relief that they feel in knowing that they have some backup, that they don't have to worry that all the checks are posted before they go home at the end of the day. They don't have to worry that the insurance claims, you know, they didn't get to touch that AR report this week because they wanted to go to Disney World with their family. Yeah. So it's it's amazing to be able to not only enjoy it myself, but know that other people are now getting to enjoy their job, basically, because they don't have the things that are stressing them out at the office. They, My favorite thing as an office manager was patient interaction. I would have loved to do more of it, but we didn't have the assist, unfortunately. <laughs> and I, I really wish they would get it in every office I ever worked in, but we didn't have the assist. And I, I didn't get to do the treatment planning I would have liked to do or spend the time following up with the patients like I would have liked to, or actually enjoy my vacation and come back to work recharged because 
I didn't get text messages on my phone every five minutes. So it, it's, it's great to be able to give somebody else that and know that they enjoy it and appreciate it and are enjoying their job again. Well, Stephanie, everything you say and the way you really communicate and your time that you have taken to come here and educate us has been so valuable. One of the things that stands out in our interview, in our conversation, is that you referred to the team that we work with as great people and that you referred to the team that you're doing all this wonderful work for as great people. And I just want you to know that you are allowing these great people to build great relationships in their office with their patients. And that, in a nutshell, is what eAssist does as a vision that they want dental offices to really succeed by building and helping build great relationships. Is there anything else that you want to share before we say goodbye? I would. I would like to say that if, if an office is listening to this and they haven't signed up yet or they're thinking about signing up, I know there is a tendency to be nervous about starting a new service or bringing a new product into your office. And I just want the offices to know that we customize everything to the office. We we come in with no preconceived notions and no preconceived processes. We mold around whatever you have built and we support you in the protocols and processes that you've already implemented. So we are simply there as an asset to your team and it's always worth trying it out and seeing, I, I swear, if you try it, you'll notice the difference almost immediately in the way your your team feels, in the amount of time you have. So I think for anybody that might be on the fence to uh, to just give it a try and, and see if it can make as big of a difference in your office as I've seen it make in the other offices that I work in. That's beautifully said. Well, there you have it, everyone. Feel free to reach out to us uh, for any additional information. And our phone number is 844-327-7478. And you can go to eassist.com. And I'm sure that you're going to get someone really, really helpful to help you make that decision about coming on board with eAssist and join our family. Well, Stephanie, you have been wonderful. I am so glad that I waited till today to, to talk with you. And I'm so, so pleased that you came on. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for having me on. It was, it was a pleasure. Well, everybody, we wish you a great week. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. We love to put the spotlight on the individuals for their outstanding work for our clients. 